Okay, hello, hi there. This is uh, Daniel. Um, ha so happy to have you on my uh, platform on YouTube. Uh, I put up this series of past questions in Wasi Science to help you to pass. And I believe that as you engage actively in our videos, uh, as you subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, make sure you do that. I believe that you won't fail all right so we'll start with wasi 2006 with objectives question one bacteria belong to the kingdom a fungi b plantae c prokaryote d protoctista so the answer is prokaryote so you'd realize that all living organisms have been put into one of the five kingdoms there are five kingdoms in the classification uh, through the works of various scientists uh, classification was done that's putting or sorting living organisms into different categories based on their similarities uh, their similar characteristics so they came out with these five kingdoms uh, they are kingdom prokaryotes kingdom plantae kingdom animalia kingdom protoctista and then kingdom fungi now humans we as humans we belong to the kingdom animalia plants belong to the kingdom plant plantae and uh, we have kingdom protoctis that one typical organism which belongs to that kingdom is plasmodium and bacteria has or uh, bacteria belongs to the kingdom prokaryotes so that's why the answer is uh, c K bacteria belongs to the kingdom prokaryotes now question two the manufacture of plastics involves a crystallization b fermentation c polymerization d vulcanization the answer is polymerization because crystallization has to do with the forming of crystals for example it is used in the making of salts fermentation would produce alcohol it has nothing to do with plastics vulcanization is also more with ties so it has nothing to do with it. so the answer is polymerization polymerization involves making large molecules out of what small molecules what happens is that what we popularly known as polythene is actually formed as a result of polymerization even the the word is a polythene so poly polymerization meaning it was formed from small molecules of ethene so the ethene were joined together to form polyethene so that's that let's move on to question three which of the following crops are sources of edible oil I copy I I granite I I I soya bean so A is I and I I only B I and I I I, I only C I I and I I I only D I I I and I I I only so the answer is D realize that all these are sources of what edible oil they all produce oil now question four sound waves cannot undergo a diffraction B dispersion C reflection D refraction the answer is refraction because refraction has to do with the change of for the direction of light when it travels from one medium to another sun waves don't undergo refraction they don't change or bend when they move from one medium to another medium they could undergo diffraction dispersion and reflection reflection of sound is what is known as uh, echo so we'll take note of that all right so let's look at question five twins are described as siamese when a both are female b one is a male the other female c they are joined at some point d one is born several hours before the other so the answer is c they are joined at some point so siamese thing twins would occur when you have the twins not being able to to separate so sometimes they will share the same organs uh, there's this popular story about a man known as Ben Carson who was able to successfully separate Siamese twins I'm sure you've heard about that so the answer is C they are joined at some point now let's move to question 6 fractional distillation can be used to produce A ethanol from wine B kerosene from crude oil C charcoal from wood D salt from sea water so the answer is kerosene from crude oil Crude oil is actually a mixture containing uh, petrol, gas, butamine, diesel, paraffin, wax, aviation fuel, a lot of them. And they are all separated into 
to this component by fractional distillation. Fractional distillation will separate a mixture based on the differences and the boiling points of its components. So that's the answer is B kerosene from crude oil. Question 7. The removal of plant nutrients by water percolation percolating downwards from the reach of plant is known as A drainage, B erosion, C infiltration, D leaching. The answer is leaching. Leaching is actually one process in which you have plant nutrients going down, going deep down the soil as a result of rain. So the nutrients will get out of the reach of the roots of the uh, the plant. Question eight: Atmospheric air is a mixture because it a supports combustion. B can be liquefied. C contains more than two elements. D has no definite composition. So the answer is D has no definite composition. It is not a mixture because it supports combustion. That's wrong. It's not a mixture because it can be liquefied. It's not a mixture because it contains more than two elements. No, it has it's, it's a mixture because it has no definite composition. That's one characteristic of all mixtures. All mixtures don't have a definite or a fixed composition. You can change it. For example, your gari soaking, you can decide to, someone can decide to just uh, prepare gari and then with the sugar, that's all. Someone could also decide to, in addition to the gari and sugar, add needle, uh, maybe milo, granite. So you can vary the composition. That's how mixtures are. They, they are, you can vary atmospheric air is also like that sometimes the water vapor in the air could change carbon dioxide could, could also change so that's why it is the air is a mixture because it has no definite composition question 9 ectopic pregnancy may result in the a rupture of the ovary that b release of an ovum c contraction of the uterus d malfunction of the placenta so if you look at the diagram just beside the question you realize that ectopic pregnancy is a type of pregnancy in which you have the baby or the growing fetus uh, being implanted or being attached within the or the fallopian tube the fallopian tube is actually the same as the oviduct so take note of that so the same as the oviduct so normally fertilization would occur in the oviduct or the fallopian tube then the zygote or the embryo will now go and implant in the uterus that's the womb it's supposed to be attached in the womb by an ectopic pregnancy instead of the fetus or the embryo being attached within the uterus it will rather be attached within what inside the fallopian tube which is uh, risky because you, you see that the fallopian is just a tube so if the baby keeps on growing it will get to a time the fallopian tube or the oviduct toward would rapture so that's why the answer is a question 10 which of the ions can cause permanent hardness in water so uh, the answer is uh, calcium 2 plus ions permanent hardness in water is actually caused by the presence of calcium 2 plus ions and magnesium 2 plus ions uh, we could also have a uh, uh, you know when we talk about hardness in water or what you call hard water it has to do with water which does not ladder easily with soap and we are saying that because it, because what makes them not to ladder easily with soap is the presence of what uh, certain ions present now one of the ions is what calcium 2 plus ions potassium k plus sodium zinc plus they don't cause any kind of hardness now question 11 the principal organic compound formed by the by fermentation of sugar is ethanol ethanol is what is produced normally from fermentation question 12 soil aeration could be improved by a application of inorganic fertilizers b drainage of excess water c irrigation d mulching so the answer is drainage of excess water when you drain excess water away it would allow air to circulate within the soil you know soil aeration has to do with supplying air to the soil making the soil airy for air to pass and that is very crucial for for plant growth question 13 the constriction in a clinical thermometer is uh, uh, the answer is b prevent mercury from flowing back into the bowl so that's one unique feature about clinical thermometers that's what makes them different from any other thermometers not all thermometers are thermometers there are different types of thermometers. Clinical thermometers are different 
by having what a certain constriction is sometimes called a kink k-i-n-k uh, which curves downwards so uh, that kind of curve prevents mercury from what from flowing back especially when you are taking a reading uh, mercury is at a certain point if there is no kink it will flow back you can't it, would, it wouldn't be stable for you to get a reading so there is a kink there to prevent it from flowing back so that you can get your reading so that's why the answer is prevent mercury from flowing back into the ball so we can see that in the diagram uh, beside the question question 14 which of the following statements is correct for an object placed in front of a convex mirror the image is the image is behind the mirror which is a so if you look at the diagram beside the question you realize that the image is formed behind the mirror and realize that the image is not enlarged it's not inverted that's not turned upside down it is also not real because uh, it is formed behind the mirror so it becomes a virtual image so the answer is a question 15 the causative organism of whooping cough is a bacterium it's not caused by a fungus worm or virus caused by a bacteria whooping cough happens to be one of the six killer childhood disease so take note of it's caused by bacteria Question 16. The motion of a globe spinning on its axis is, is D, rotational. You know, there are different types of motion. We have uh, there is rectilinear motion, oscillatory motion, circular motion. Rectilinear motion is a type of motion in which the body will move what, in a straight line. There are types of movement. Rectilinear is when the body will move in straight Like, for example, someone walking, you just move straight. Oscillatory is what we call the sometimes called simple harmonic. It's the to and fro movement, like the body goes up, like up and down movement. For example, like seesaw or uh, pendulum bob, we call that oscillatory. Circular is when the body moves in a circular path. So the answer is D. You see, circular and rotational they are different. Circular, the body move along a circular path, but for rotational, the body is just at one point, and then you have it turning about its axis question 17 what is the color of naphthalene in orange juice uh, it is what colorless that's b you know orange juice is actually acidic and if naphthalene happens to be uh, colorless in acidic environment or acidic medium so you could see that in the diagram on the right side phenophthalene is clear in acid you can see there is acid in the beaker which is colorless so that's how uh, phenolphthalein behaves is an indicator behaves it becomes colorless when put in an acid question question 18 germinating seeds releases heat energy and carbon dioxide which is an indication that seeds are living things you see that one of the reasons why we as humans are classified as living organisms is because what we, we breathe in oxygen and then breathe out carbon dioxide it's actually an indication that we are living or we are undergoing a life process called respiration. Respiration would uh, would would end up producing what you end up releasing carbon dioxide and producing heat energy. So if the germinating seeds are undergoing this one of these seven life processes, then it shows that they are living things. So seeds are living things. So let's take note of that. Question 19. The partial shadow is also referred to as see penumbra so if you look at the diagram on the right you realize that the apple forms two types of shadows one is very dark totally dark that's the umbra then there's one which is partial that's what you call penumbra so the partial shadow is also known as penumbra question 20 colostrum is very important for the feeding of newly born mammals because it contains antibodies proteins and vitamins for initial growth that's the, the answer is b you know colostrum is different from breast milk look at the picture on the right you realize that colostrum is is a yellowish it's actually uh what comes out of the breast of uh mother mother mammals in the first three days or the first week uh, after birth and this colostrum has been identified to to contain a lot of antibodies antibodies help fight infections proteins would help in the development of the baby so you see this is very very crucial it's very crucial because of the antibodies it contains to help fight infection proteins which will help make the baby grow as well 
so that is that so the answer is b so we shall we will look at our next video make sure you subscribe